Coming up, the latest on a deadly helicopter crash in West Virginia as investigators tried to determine what went wrong. And school safety is a hot topic as districts across the mountains. Uh, we take you to one district that will start enforcing a no backpack policy. And we've got a hot start to the weekend ahead as our heat dome continues to exert dominance throughout the area. The very latest next is first and four continues. Mountain News first at four continues. Hello again, I'm Dakota Makris. The Federal Aviation Administration and National Transportation Safety Board officials are continuing their investigation into a deadly helicopter crash that killed six people yesterday in Logan County, West Virginia. Well, it crashed near State Route 17 in the Kelly Mountain area. Our sister station, WSAZ, reports the helicopter was a Vietnam-era Huey based out of the Logan Airport and was used for tourist flights. Well, officials say the passengers on board were not local. We, of course, are continuing to follow this story and we'll keep you updated as we learn more. Well, what is so dangerous about fentanyl? The powerful drug has been a main cause for many overdoses in the state. The Kentucky Office of Drug Control Policy reports 73% of overdoses last year included fentanyl. Brightview VP of Clinical Services in Kentucky, Rhonda Roper, says it only takes a little amount of the drug to cause a big problem. Well, since it takes, uh, you know, such a small amount of fentanyl to produce a high, uh, you know, you don't have to put much of it into a substance or use as much of it to get the high. Well, we'll have more on the dangers of fentanyl when you join us tonight at 6 o'clock. Well, Knox County Public Schools are moving forward with a policy with, excuse me, a backpack policy to cover every school district wide. Backpacks will no longer be allowed in the schools. Our Jade Saylor has more. Knox County Schools are introducing a district-wide no-backpack policy this school year. There's many uh, safety benefits uh, to having um, backpacks left at home. The school system has implemented this into their middle schools in the past years, and administrators say they have seen nothing but positive results from it. So for the upcoming year, we're going district-wide, which will include Knox Central, which was the only school up to that point that hasn't had the backpack policy. The school system also implemented metal detectors in their schools to ensure extra safety. Knox Mill quickly found out that they can get more students through the metal detectors if they have less backpacks and things to actually go through. Students will be checked at every entrance point to make sure they are not carrying a backpack. In Knox County, Jade Saylor, WIMT, Mountain News. Well, there are policies in place for some exemptions if kids do bring a backpack to school. We'll have more on this story this evening. Well, plenty of sunshine around the mountains yet again this afternoon. And unlike yesterday, we'll keep the dry weather and calm weather on the way as we head into the evening. Outside right now, I-64 at Moorhead. Just some fair weather clouds this afternoon. Still bright and sunny. Downtown Whitesburg, the sun is also out there. They sit at 86, but that dew point of 55 makes the 86 feel a little more like 85. Thanks to those northwest winds, temperatures around the area, upper 80s to near 90. That is above average, but with dew points sitting in the middle and upper 50s versus the 70s we were dealing with yesterday, the feels like temperatures are either right at or just below the air temperature, so it's not making an already hot situation even worse like we saw yesterday. There's our storm reports from yesterday as well. Pinpoint Doppler is a clean sweep, so we don't have to worry about any of those storm reports repeating themselves this afternoon, and we'll continue to see just a couple of clouds finish working through the region, and those should diminish as we head into tonight. So as we finish the night out, keep that WYMT weather app handy. You might need it, especially if you've got any outdoor plans. You'll see, open it up, scroll through the forecast. You'll see we're back into the 70s as we head into the overnight before we wake up in the 60s tomorrow morning. Now, I've got the very latest on when more heat works our way and when we could see some cooling showers and storms. That's coming up in just a few minutes. Dakota? All right, Evan, thank you. What's well, the news about 200,000 people were waiting for? 
The White House has agreed to cancel an estimated $6 billion in federal student loan debt. This is specifically for borrowers who claim they were defrauded by their college for inflated job placement rates or the ability to transfer credits. Will the deal to wipe away the remaining federal student loan debt for all 200,000 borrowers who filed claims as part of a proposed settlement agreement that was filed in federal court Wednesday? It still has to be approved by a judge, but if it is, another 64,000 borrowers who've already filed a claim could be eligible for debt relief too. Well, the U.S. Supreme Court is limiting the ability to enforce Miranda rights in a 6-3 to three ruling Tuesday, excuse me, Thursday. The court ruled suspects who are not warned about their right to remain silent cannot sue a police officer for damages under the federal civil rights law. That's even if the evidence was ultimately used against them in their criminal trial. The ruling cuts back on a person's protections against self-incrimination by barring the potential to obtain damages. It also means the fail failure to administer the warning will not expose a police officer to potential damages in a civil lawsuit. The owner of the NFL's Washington Commanders has been su subpoenaed for a questioning by a congressional committee. Dan Snyder has refused to discuss alleged workplace misconduct and sexual harassment in the Commanders organization. Nicole Killian is on Capitol Hill with more. And that was my goal and my dream growing up was to be a Redskinette. And, you know, unfortunately, Dan Snyder took that passion out of my dream. A deflated dream for Melanie Coburn, who spent 14 years as a cheerleader and marketing executive for the then Washington Redskins, now known as the Commanders. What would you say was the worst part of your experience? The sexual harassment at every turn. I've, I've been in very dangerous situations where, you know, there's been drinking encouraged. Describing a toxic culture, the House Oversight Committee released a 29-page memo alleging owner Dan Snyder launched a shadow investigation, creating a dossier to discredit his accusers. It also found the NFL allowed him to investigate his own team and influence an independent investigation into misconduct conduct, which has not been released. If the NFL is unwilling or unable to hold Mr. Snyder accountable, then I am prepared to do so. NFL Commissioner Roger Goodell would not commit to releasing its internal report, but told lawmakers the team was fined $10 million and has made reforms. We have been open and direct about the fact that the workplace culture at the commanders was not only unprofessional, but toxic for far too long. He was pressed about further action against Snyder. Will you remove him? I don't have the authority to remove him. According to the NFL bylaws and constitution, the commissioner does have the authority to refer disciplinary issues to the league's executive committee. At least 24 of the 32 team owners would need to vote to remove an owner. What do you want to see come out of this process? I want transparency so there can be true accountability. Snyder has denied any personal allegations of wrongdoing, calling the accusations against him outright lies. Commanders head coach Ron Rivera defended the team in a tweet writing, I cannot change the past, but I would hope that our fans, the NFL and Congress can see that we are doing everything in our power to never repeat those workplace issues. Nicole Killian, CBS News, Capitol Hill. American artistic swimmer Anita Alvarez was not breathing when she was rescued from the bottle bottom of the pool after fainting at the World Aquatics Championships. The 25-year-old lost consciousness after completing her solo free final routine in Budapest on Wednesday. Alvarez's coach Andrew Futinez responded to the drama by driving in fully, excuse me, diving in fully clothed to pull the swimmer to safety. Alvarez was given medical attention poolside before being taken away on a stretcher. In a statement on the U.S. Artistic Swimming Instagram page, the coach said Alvarez would be assessed by doctors on Thursday before a decision was made on her competing in Friday's team event. Nike is now fully exiting Russia, joining other big Western brands. Nike suspended online and franchise store sales in Russia shortly after it invaded Ukraine in March. But its non-franchise stores continue to operate, but that's coming to an end. And Nike said its priority is to make sure it's fully supporting its workers while it responsibly scales down operations over the coming months. Nike had about 100 stores in the country. Well, coming up on First at Four, Americans wanting a big bang this 4th of July may get sticker shock. Why prices for fireworks have skyrocketed.
Plus, hot weather continues as we set our sights on the weekend. I've got the very latest on whether we can see some cooling storms. That's coming up next. WIMT News app offers alerts on breaking stories as they happen, customized to the categories.